if we consider a circle of radius r okay so we're saying consider a circle of radius r right we know that that circle that circle is going to have a center o right and then any distance from the center o to any point on the circumference of the circle is said to be the radius so meaning for us to draw a circle a 2d circle like this one we only need the center of the circle and the radius okay or if we've been given the diameter then we have to convert that diameter into the radius by dividing it by two right yes and then we draw now you, you can think of an, an, an ellipse as um a distorted a disfigured circle maybe when you get this circle you press it maybe in this direction like that or you press it in that direction right and then you have an oval shape which will look like um this and then we we'll still maintain the center so we are coming from this circle right we we'll still maintain the center and that axis like that now if we compare these two for a circle like this one here the distance from the center to any point whether this point that point that point or that point is the same right okay and then when you come to this one here the distance from the center o here to this point that we can call maybe this point that we can call point a and that point there find that the distance from this point to that point Will be equal to the distance from this point to that point right okay and the distance from this same point to a point that we can put there and that point there so the distance from this point to that point and this point to that point will be equal but it will not be equal to the distance from this point to that point okay but this distance and that distance are equal for example a o is equal to o b right and C O is equal to O D, like that. So whilst a circle like this one is defined by the center point and the radius, or maybe the diameter, right? The ellipse is defined by these two distances. Because you have the longer distance and the shorter one there, right? So the longer distance, for example, okay. So I saying the distance A B is called the major axis okay and then this distance cd is called the minor axis so the ellipse will have two axes the major axis and the minor axis that's all so for you to construct an ellipse you need to have the major axis and the minor axis two axes for you to draw a circle, you need to have only the radius, like that. So basically, that's the difference between the ellipse and the circle. Now, so we're going to concentrate on the first one, which is the concentric circle method. Here. And the, so what are concentric circles? <clears throat> when we talk of concentric circles, we're talking of two or more circles that are different, but share the same uh, center or two different circles that have a common center, concentric circles. So if, so if you have circles that are drawn in this manner, where you have a bigger circle and a smaller circle like that, okay? As long as they share the same center, then they are called concentric circles. So in this example, we're going to construct an ellipse given the major axis as 120 millimeters and the minor axis 50 millimeters so um, when constructing an ellipse using the concentric circle method you are given the major axis and the minor axis there the major axis represents the diameter over the bigger circle because for concentric circles you need to have two circles when constructing the, the ellipse using the concentric circle method, right? So the major axis 
represents the diameter of the bigger circle. And then the minor axis represents the diameter of the smaller circle. So what it means, whenever you've been given the major and the minor axis, and you're using concentric circles, you draw two circles from the same center. One will have diameter of the minor axis, 50 in our case, right? And the other one will have the diameter of the major axis, which is 120 in our case. Now, when you've been given the diameter, you have to open to a radius over half the diameter, right? You know the difference between radius and diameter. So, for example, if the diameter is 120, we get our compass, we open it to a radius of 60 millimeters, and then we draw that uh, uh, required circle. And for this one, we draw a circle of radius 25. And it is worth noting that before you start drawing any circle, a circle is um, a symmetrical object, right? So before you draw that circle, you start with center lines. Are we together? You start with two center lines that meet at 90 degrees so that you identify the center point of uh, those circles, which should also be the geometric center of uh, your ellipse. So we start with center lines. Okay? So after creating, your, after creating your center like this one here, you get your compass, you draw a circle from this center of radius 25 and from the same center, another circle of radius 60 millimeters. So after drawing two circles, the one that represents the major axis and the other one that represents the minor axis, right? You want to divide these circles into a number of equal parts. So a circle can be divided into, first of all, if you look at these center lines, they've already divided the circles into their quadrants, right? Like four equal parts, like that, okay? So you can divide them like this, or you can divide the circles into eight equal parts by drawing a, an angle bisector here. I'm sure by now we know what an angle bisector is, right? Because this is angle 90 here. So you can draw an angle bisector so that you divide this into two parts. An angle bisector there so that you divide that into two parts. So you can divide from this, you can divide it into eight equal parts. It's acceptable. But uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to use uh, 12 equal parts. So I'm going to demonstrate how to divide the circle into 12 equal parts. Okay? It can also be divided, it's worth noting that, it's, it can also be divided into 16 equal parts, 24 equal parts, or 32 equal parts, like that, okay? But we're going to use them um, 12 equal parts. And when we divide this circle, since these are concentric circles, they are coming from the same center, right? When we divide one circle, it means we've divided even the other circle. Because the division are just the, the angles that are there. So, whenever you have a circle, you want to divide it into 12 equal parts. You get your compass, you open to the radius of that circle. So, if we are going to do our divisions on the bigger circle here, then we need to open it to the, red, to the radius of the bigger circle. Are we together? Okay. So, we get the radius of the bigger circle, which is this one. I don't think I changed. This one here, right? For me. And then, you place your compass on the quadrants. These are quadrants, are not corners, okay? So you, you place your compass on each quadrant. For example, I'll place my compass here. I'll strike an arc, okay? I'll strike another arc there. I'll move to the other quadrant. Strike an arc. Strike an arc there. I'll move to the other quadrant. I'll move to the other quadrant. Strike an arc. And strike an arc. So from here again, you strike an arc and an arc this side. Let's draw lines from each point passing through the center of the circle to the other point. Faint lines. After dividing your circle like this, 
So you, you've now seen that if you divide this circle outside, it will even divide the circle inside there after you draw the line, right? So the points on the bigger circle have corresponding points on the inside circle. So let's let's number our um, points on all the circles like this. The next step is a very simple principle. We consider the points on the outside circle. Again, okay? we consider the points on the outside circle. Now, before we start doing anything, we have to consider the position of the ellipse or the orientation of the ellipse. Uh, be mindful that the ellipse can be in this orientation like this, right? Like the horizontal there, or it can be like this. In our example, we are going to use uh, this orientation there. And it all depends on uh, what we are about to start doing now. Okay? So if we want to draw an ellipse like this one here, the one that has been oriented like this, we consider the points on the bigger circle there. So at each point, you want to draw a line that is parallel to the vertical axis, to this one here. Okay? So when you come here, you draw a line that is parallel to that. You come there, you draw a line that is parallel to that. Here we already have a line, so we uh, bypass it. We come to this one. So at each and every point. And those lines that we are drawing should be going towards the smaller circle. Okay? Now, you will notice that when you start moving from 0 and 12 here, when you go to point 1 and point 11, you find that they will be in the same vertical line, point 1 and point 11, on our division. That's how it moves. So from here, whether you've divided them in two, whether you've divided the circle into um, 8 equal parts, 12 equal parts, 16 equal parts, like that. So they will be moving in 2, 2. Just like we have 3 and 9. Now in the same vertical line right yes so from 0 to 1 and 12 to 11 there instead of drawing parallel lines to this one we just join this point and that point okay with a line like this faint lines so you don't want to join the two points just draw lines that that will be long enough but they shouldn't be joined because they might confuse us okay just draw lines that will be So after drawing these lines that are parallel to this one here, on the bigger circle, you draw, so you concentrate the, the, the corresponding points now, the other points on the smaller circle there. So on these points on the smaller circle, you draw lines that are parallel to this one, the horizontal. Okay? You draw lines that are parallel to the horizontal and they should be going towards the bigger circle. So at this point, you expect to go that side, this point, like that, for there. So from this point, you move to two and four, they should be going like that. And they should meet with these points. They should meet with these lines. So the line that is coming from point four should meet with that, this line. The line that is coming from this one should meet with the line that is coming from the corresponding point on the other circle. So for example here, So you are only interested in the points of intersection of these lines, the horizontal and the vertical line, the horizontal and the vertical line. After connecting, after drawing the, the horizontal lines, so the path of the ellipse is traced by connecting these points of intersection. Okay, so when you start from zero, to this point which we can call point one because it is coming from one to one so this is another point one there right 
to point two, point three here because it, and you draw a curve. And there we have our ellipse. So as you are drawing those um, <coughs> profiles, okay, it's worth noting that an ellipse doesn't have corners. Okay? An ellipse doesn't have corners. An ellipse doesn't have uh, corners, but it's a curve. It's a curved path. So it should not be like this. 